I signed an executive order directing Arizonans to stay home, stay healthy, and stay connected. And that was Governor Doug Ducey one year ago today, declaring the COVID-19 pandemic a public health emergency in Arizona. And of course, we weren't in an isolated crisis on this day last year. The COVID-19 outbreak also officially declared a worldwide pandemic. And most of us didn't realize it at the time, but our lives changed dramatically almost overnight, right? A lot of people started working from home. Our social lives came to a screeching halt. Schools shut down, travel came to a halt. Restaurants offered carry out or delivery service only, and grocery store shelves were cleared out as families rushed to get cleaning supplies, canned goods, and they seemed to take every single last <laughs> roll of toilet paper. But uh, now we're holding out hope as we see some signs of life returning to a new normal. More Americans are traveling, schools preparing to welcome kids back for in-person learning, Olivia. And one of the biggest signs of our economy bouncing back, store shelves being fully stocked usually, right? So uh, we have team coverage tracking how far we have come in the past year. We wanna begin with Gibby, who is live at Bashes. Hi, Gibby. Good morning, guys. Yeah, you know, that is always a sight to see. Something we probably took uh, took it for granted, right? Knowing that the little things we wanted in the stores were going to be there. But guess what? Here's the thing, Ashley. When the grocery store workers were out here going 24 hours, it seemed like, just trying to get everything going, there was a lot to be learned by it, and everyone collabed together. And I think that's what made this all possible. Yeah, definitely. I think as, as we move through from the start of the pandemic a year ago, through those first few weeks into the months, it really provided an opportunity for the industry as a whole, the entire food industry, to look and find some areas of improvement, some ways that we can collaborate better, some, some different opportunities within local sourcing, um, so that if we were ever faced with something like this again, you know, we, can, we can continue to respond. And the thing is, we always talk about how social media has a way of really taking people off their group because people actually thought you guys were hiding toilet paper in the back of the store. That's not how this works. Right, that's actually not a thing. So <laughs> we were we were adjusting um, our delivery schedules, our ordering systems um, every single day, making sure that we were flipping. As soon as we got something, it was out in our stores within hours. Um, so it absolutely was was just you know a continual process on making sure that we're getting things out to the stores as quickly as possible. As they continue to do so now, even a year later, when you think of what Bashes Food Cities and AJ's, uh, they've gotten together with a lot of these other grocery stores to figure out that we will not have to go through this again. And the other thing I wanted to point out there, guys, is remember those workers who are here who were essential, who never stopped working. They live in your community. They live right next door to you. So when you come here and you're mean to them or you are yelling at them because something you can't find, they're your neighbor. Most of all, be kind. Always you are right a good about reminder. that, Gibby. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, speaking of which, for a long time, a lot of grocery store workers have felt forgotten in the vaccine rollout. Yeah, but they, along with other essential workers, will now at least be a priority to get the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine in Maricopa County. Our members have been showing up to work for a year, fully exposed to this virus. Workers include those at the post office, public transit, state and local governments, those who work at funeral homes and in manufacturing. Now, this does not mean every single person in these industries are eligible right away. Just those frontline roles who are working on site and within six feet of coworkers or the public. And today also marks nearly a year since President Donald Trump started working on the first economic stimulus package. And yesterday the House passed a third relief package. So Javi joins us with more on this new bill that hopefully will provide a much needed lifeline for some struggling Americans. Yeah, Scott, and this huge this bill is huge. In fact, it's being touted as one of the largest and most sweeping economic stimulus bills approved by Congress in U.S. history. It is now headed to President Joe Biden's desk and he's expected to sign it tomorrow. So let's walk you through this bill. We're talking $1,400 stimulus checks should be out to most Americans by the end of this month. And those making less than $75,000 will get the full check. The cutoff will be for people making $80,000 and families making $160,000. Children, they get payments as well. So a typical family of four will get about $5,600. 
Also included, $300 a week federal unemployment benefits are extended through September 6th. The first $10,000 will be tax free. The bill also provides money to reopen schools safely, vaccine distribution, support for state and local governments, plus $15 billion will help small businesses with long term low interest loans. President Biden is calling this COVID relief bill a historic victory. And as I mentioned, he's expected to sign it tomorrow, which means the stimulus payments could go out by the end of this month. Fingers crossed, maybe sooner for those folks and those direct deposits should get them first. Now the bill also includes $125 billion to help reopen nation's K through 12 public schools. All right, Javier, that's right. That's something that's going to be really necessary for so many schools preparing to reopen some that had planned to stay closed or in a hybrid version after Governor Ducey's executive order. Yes, yeah, so as Arizona School Authority has reported, many districts are still working out all those details, but there are some other concerns as well regarding the teachers. Maria joining us now to break that part of it down. Maria. Good morning. So one concern is, will there be enough teachers when schools are required to reopen on Monday? And if not, will there be enough substitutes to keep those doors open? With Monday's looming deadline, we know that it is a scramble for about half the school districts across our state. We know that March 15th, that is one year since the governor announced the first wave of school closures because of COVID concerns. He cites in his executive order that it is time to reopen campuses because of lower, lower COVID case numbers, new CDC guidance, and evidence that suggests K through 12 in-person learning is not a primary driver of community transmission. Local substitute teaching staffing company, Educational Services Inc. contracts with 60 districts across Arizona. The pool of 5,000 substitute teachers is a little stronger than a few months ago because some are getting vaccinated and feeling more comfortable saying yes to jobs, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. Very much still a substitute shortage, uh, no question about it. It's just a little bit better, certainly. Um, it's kind of the two things go together. We're going to see more classrooms open, which means we're going to need way more substitutes. Um, but simultaneously with that, um, just like we've seen over the last few months, there, there are some people that may still be a little bit concerned. Maybe they haven't even gotten vaccinated yet. We've watched school districts at different times throughout the pandemic struggle to reopen and stay open because of staged teacher sick outs. Remember the J.O. Combs Unified School District last year? Right now, about 50% of schools statewide already have an in-person learning option. It's really just about getting the other half up and running after spring break. Now, I do want to know, we know that there are some parents, teachers, uh, educators really excited about the start of school and being able to come back in person, they really believe that they can do so safely. And those who don't, I wanna also make a big note that they still have the option to remote to learn remotely from home. Back to you. All right, thanks.